Hello world, this is Lisa Fredrickson, your friendly professor at Johnson County Community College. And today's short screencast is going to be on how to insert images. Here's an image of some beautiful fall trees. And here's the tag for that image. The image tag is a void or an empty tag. There's no start and end tag. It's simply a tag with two critical attributes. SRC is the source of the image. That's actually the image name for this picture on the web page. The alt attribute stands for alternate text. The alt attribute is important for several reasons. If we break the link to this file, I'm going to break the link by messing up the name of the file, the JPG file, save and refresh this page. If the link to that file is broken for any reason that that image cannot be rendered by the browser, you'll see the alt text there instead of the image. So the first reason why the alt text is important is it gives you some sense of what content should be there should the image not be able to be rendered by that browser for any reason. The second reason it's important is because it provides alternate text for screen readers. So if someone with vision impairment or just someone that's busy that wants the screen to be read to them is using a program to read this page, then the program would read the alternate text to help them understand the content on the page. Thirdly, it's important for validation. Your page will not validate cleanly without the alt attribute. And finally, it's important for SEO, search engine optimization. Those are some of the words that crawlers and programs that index pages will index to determine what type of content is on a page. So the image tag has two required attributes, SRC and ALT. The second thing I want to talk about is organizing your image files. Typically, the image files are not kept in the same folder as the HTML files. Because of there's no folder path to this file, that means fall.jpg and image demo.html must live in the same folder but a more common way to organize your files would be to have a folder, and I've called it 4IMG, that has your HTML files, and then a subfolder for your images and a subfolder for your styles. I'm gonna move the fall JPG file into the images subfolder. As soon as I do that and I refresh this page, then the link to our image is broken again, because after all, fall.jpg and image demo.html are not in the same folder. When you organize your images in a subfolder, you simply have to tell the source attribute, go into the images folder, and there you'll find fall.jpg. And as soon as I do that, save the page, and refresh it, I've got my great picture back again. A, another way of organizing your files might be to have the images folder and the folder that holds your HTML, and in my case, that's called 4IMG, at the same level. So I'm going to click on images and then cut it, go back a level, and paste it. So now the folder for IMG that contains the image demo.html file and the images folder are at the same level. So the question becomes, how do I get from this image demo.html file back a level and then into the images folder to reference it on this web page? Because now when I refresh this web page, this path that I've specified in my SRC attribute is no longer correct. Well, to back up from my current folder, you do this syntax, dot, dot, slash. Dot, dot, slash means back up a level and then go forward into the images folder, and there you'll find fall.jpg. I'm going to save that and refresh it. And so often in an SRC or an href link, you'll see this dot, dot syntax. And it simply means go back a level before you start going forward into the next folder that's listed to find the file. So you see dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, slash. Now we're backing up two levels before we go forward into images and finding fall.jpg. So that's how to insert an image and how to organize the images and the HTML files in different folders. I want to show you one other thing that I often see that has come out of favor now. And that is to put a width attribute into your opening image tag. I'm going to do it here to show it to you because you're going to see it a lot, but you're not going to want to do this. If I specify a width and or a height attribute, 
then that much space in pixels is reserved on the web page. The reason you don't want to do this, let's make it a little bit wider. If you specify a width in pixels, then your, your image is always going to be that width. Now this used to be a popular thing to do because specifying the width and or height attributes reserves that space on the web page before the image gets downloaded. So from a productivity standpoint, specifying a width and or height attributes correctly was considered a productivity boost. We don't like that plan anymore though because it makes the image non-responsive. What we want to do instead is, a, is delete all of our fixed width and height attributes in our image tag and use our style sheet to make this image flexible. So here's our style sheet, styles.css. It's in a styles subfolder under the folder that contains image demo.html. Doesn't have any styles on it yet, but to make an image flexible, you use this CSS style. For the image selector, you want to do max width 100%. When you use the max width rule, it will not allow that image to expand wider than whatever its normal maximum width is. I have that image open in paint now, and I can see that naturally it is 640 pixels wide by 480 pixels tall. So if I say max width of 100%, that image will not grow beyond those natural sizes. You typically don't want your images to grow beyond those natural sizes because it can get distorted and pixelated at big screen sizes. So max width of 100% does not let the image grow beyond its normal uh, actual size. The real magic of the max width at 100% rule is when you start looking at this web page in different sized viewports. And I'm going to refresh it and start resizing my viewport. And you can see that that image has now been transformed into a flexible image. That's going to look great on an iPhone or a tablet or even a large screen. It won't get bigger than its maximum normal size. That style does allow the image to resize and be flexible as we go down to a smaller viewport. So this is the preferred way to style your images so that they're flexible on various size viewports. Thank you for listening.